What's up, everybody? It's your girl T, and I'm here today with John Holzer, who is an elevator master. Elevator technician is fine. So basically, he knows a crap load more about elevators than you or I do, and he's going to tell us what movies got right and what they got wrong in their various elevator disaster portrayals. Here's Johnny. There's a very famous elevator moment in The Shining where a bunch of blood comes rushing out of the elevator. Do you have any idea, like, roughly how much liquid could an elevator realistically hold? Liquid inside of the elevator itself, probably around 2,000 gallons. But in that movie, the uh, the blood's coming out of the hoistway, not necessarily the elevator. What exactly is the hoistway? So the hoistway is where the elevator travels. Like you have the building and you have different floors in the building and all the elevator is, it's a vehicle that takes you through the hoistway to the different floors. Let's talk about Spider-Man Homecoming, one of the big blockbusters of summer 2017. There's that really huge scene with the elevator. Basically, he has to hoist the elevator up, not hoist away, but hoist the elevator up with his web. Yeah. How strong would his web have to be to actually be able to hold up an elevator? An elevator car basically weighs about as much as like a Prius. That's actually lighter than I would have expected. Not only is a web strong, Spider-Man himself is gonna need to be pretty strong too. I did it! <laughs> They also rescue the students by going through the top of the elevator. They pull them out through that, that opening, that hatch right. at the top. Is that realistically the way that you would do a, an extraction, I guess, if you had people trapped inside of an elevator? Yeah, it's, it's called the escape hatch. Um, it has to be a certain size by code to allow people to go through it. And that's primarily what it's there for, is to rescue people in case you can't get them out of the elevator through the doors. If you don't see one in an elevator, it's because there's a drop ceiling, but there's a part of that canopy that's also removable from the top. How easy is it to actually become stuck in an elevator shaft? Getting out of a hoistway is not difficult. It's easy to open them from the inside, very difficult to open them from the outside. In Mission Impossible, there's a scene at the beginning where one of the team members is on top of the elevator and he's hacking into the system and the elevator starts moving and then as he gets to the top, these spikes come out and stab him in the eye, killing him. Is that something you guys do? You guys are putting spikes in elevator shafts? Yeah, that's, they come with spikes, you know. They, I mean, <laughs> when an elevator comes out, the first thing we install are the spikes at the top of the whole swing. <laughs> no, this is ridiculous. One thing about elevators is that they are one of the safest things you can ride in. So the last thing you're gonna find in an elevator hoistway are spikes that come down <laughs> for no apparent reason. So the good news is the likelihood of you getting stabbed in the eye while on top of an elevator Pretty, pretty low. There's also a scene in Mission Impossible where they hide underneath the elevator. Is that something that you could realistically do? Most every elevator has an area below it called the elevator pit. It also has to have enough space for guys like us to be able to safely um, get out of the way of the elevator if we are working down there and something were to happen and it were to fall. Oh, great. In Willy Wonka, there's a lot of magical things, magical snacks and treats. It's an elevator. It's a Wonkavator. An elevator can only go up and down, but the Wonkavator can go sideways and slantways and long ways and back ways and square ways and front ways and any other ways that you can think of. Is it feasible to ever have an elevator that can move in multiple directions? There is an elevator right now. It's called the multi-elevator, and it goes vertically and horizontally. It just makes for more efficiency in the building for moving people around. But as far as the Willy Wonka elevator is concerned, yeah, that's, that's Willy Wonka's magic. Let's talk about one of my personal favorite movies, Die Hard. How hard is it to pry open an elevator like John McClane does in the first movie? It's pretty difficult. Uh, I've actually worked in that building, so if you were to open one of those doors, the elevator would stop electrically because it's a safety feature. Firefighters actually have things that allow them to force elevator doors open, but you pretty much have to destroy the door um, to get into the hoistway. Geronimo, Speed. Also a classic movie, also a very famous elevator sequence. Dennis Hopper's character, the bomber, he takes out the cables in the elevator to attack it. Is that a realistic way to decommission an elevator? He did a pretty good job. He basically blows up what I think are the shackles. You see the brakes engage and they're all sparking and you know it takes kind of a long time for the elevator to stop. And at that point, the elevator is being held up by the safeties. He also has explosives attached to the safeties. So if you blow those up, you have a big box that's just falling down. So speed is essentially a how-to guide on how to accurately f up an elevator. Don't f with daddy. 
I've always noticed is that the floor indicator lights are still working as the elevator is falling. Depending on the elevator, it can, it'll change um, if you just lower the elevator down because the elevator has knowledge of where it is in the hoistway. That's how it knows where to stop. It's counting where it's at and if it's in a free fall situation, totally, yeah. If someone were to slide down an elevator cable and he or she was not Keanu Reeves, how well would that work out? Uh, you can do it. Uh, this goes back into elevator lore that I heard about when I first got into the trade. Guys on construction sites bat way back in the day, this is not now. We have safety procedures. We are number one with safety, 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 safety. To go to lunch, they'd be at one floor and they'd run, jump into the hoistway, grab the ropes, go down to the top of the elevator a few floors, get out and go get their lunch. Pretty badass, honestly, the way you describe it. Let's talk about Final Destination and that crazy scene where someone gets decapitated by an elevator coming down. Could that really happen or are there more safety features in place to prevent that? It's totally a thing that can happen. There's plenty of videos from other countries where this does happen. Um, and it's usually because their standards uh, for elevators are substandard. The elevator has no brain. It doesn't think, all it knows is it has to move up and down, and if that's not there, it, it's gravity at that point. That's gonna do it for us today, but I wanna thank our special guest, John Holzer. Where can people find you? Uh, you can find me at John Holzer on Twitter. I also do a podcast called uh, Four Brewers, fourbrewers.com, we talk about beer. Elevators and microbrewing, he's a renaissance man. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure you guys subscribe for future episodes, and we will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.